Hi, today we are going to learn body temperature regulation. The normal body temperature. Normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So when you do vigorous exercise, your body temperature increases. Body temperature increases. Number three, temperature receptor in the skin. Temperature receptor in the skin. Temperature receptor in the skin detect the change in the temperature. Detect the change in the temperature. Number three. And number four, the receptor. The receptor, the temperature receptor, generate the nerve impulse. Generate, produce, or I say generate the nerve impulses. And the nerve impulses were sent to the hypothalamus by neurons. Once the nerve impulse reached the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus is stimulated. Stimulated. So I repeat 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1. Normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. Number 2. When you do vigorous exercise, the body temperature increases. Number three, temperature receptor. Temperature receptor detect the change in temperature, change in body temperature. Number four, temperature receptor generate nerve impulses and send to the hypothalamus by neuron. So once the nerve impulses reach the hypothalamus, hypothalamus is stimulated. From the hypothalamus, nerve impulse sent to the relevant parts of the body. This will stimulate. This will stimulate vasodilation of arterial in the skin. Vasodilation. Okay, means the arterial in the skin dilate, 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 widening. So more blood flow here and the shunt vessel which connect the arterial to the venue shunt vessel which connect the arterial to the venue constrict constrict so if the arterial dilate widening and the shunt vessel constrict means more blood will flow to the blood capillaries near the surface of the skin more blood more blood flow to the blood capillaries near the surface of the skin. So if more blood flow to the blood capillaries near the surface of the skin, means more heat can be lost by three ways, which is number one, radiation, A, radiation, B, convection, and C, conduction. Most of the heat is lost by radiation. So I repeat. So nerve impulses from the hypothalamus sent to the skin and this will cause vasodilation of arterial, arterial in the skin. The arterial in the skin dilates and the shunt vessel constrict and this will cause, this causes more blood flow to the flow to the blood capillaries near the skin surface, near skin surface. Okay, so more heat can be lost. You must mention more heat can be lost by radiation, convection, and conduction. So by this way, can cool down your body, can cool down your body. Next, nerve impulses also sent to the sweat glands. Sweat glands become more active more active so if the sweat gland become more active mean more sweat will be produced more sweat produced and more sweat evaporates more sweat evaporates that means the sweat change from the liquid state to the vapor state once the sweat change from the liquid state to the vapor state mean a lot of heat a lot of heat from our body will be lost to the surrounding and this will cool down your body, will cool your body. And the heat is called more latent heat, more latent heat of vaporization. 
more rapid heat of vaporization is lost when you are hot. Next, you can see this erector muscle which is attached to your skin hair. So this erector muscle can contract and relax to change the position of skin hair. So when you are hot, erector muscle relax, erector muscle relax, and the skin hair is lowered, lowered and flattened. So when the skin hair is lowered and flattened, the soul less heat is trapped. So you want to prevent the heat trap. Next, thyroid glands. Thyroid gland will secrete less thyroxine. Adrenal gland will secrete less adrenaline. And this will cause our body metabolism become low or I say metabolic rate decreases. And less heat is generated. Of course, the skeletal muscles, skeletal muscles are not stimulated, not stimulated. So, no shivering occur, no shivering occur. So, all these actions, all these actions is to bring our body temperature back to normal, which is 37 degrees Celsius. So, I repeat, number one, our our normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So when you do vigorous exercise, your body temperature increases. Body temperature increases and the temperature receptor in the skin detect the changes in body temperature. And the receptor generate nerve impulses. And the nerve impulses send to the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is stimulated. From the hypothalamus, nerve impulses is sent to the relevant part of the body, such as the muscles, such as glands, and also the skin. So this will stimulate vasodilation of arterial in the skin. That means the arterial in the skin dilates, and the sharp vessel, which is connect the arterial to the venule, constrict, narrowing. So this will cause more blood flow to the capillaries which is near the skin surface. So more heat, more heat can be lost through three ways, which is radiation, convection, and conduction. Next, sweat glands. Sweat glands become more active when you're hot, when you do vigorous exercise. So sweat glands become more active, more sweat will be produced, and more sweat evaporates. When more sweat evaporates, mean more latent heat, more latent heat of vaporization is lost. Next, erector muscle. The erector muscle relax and the skin hair is lowered. When this muscle relax, lengthen this area. This become lengthened. And the skin hair is lowered and flattened. Less heat is trapped because now you are hot. Next, thyroid glands release less thyroxine. Adrenal glands release less adrenaline and metabolic rates become low. Less heat is generated. Skeletal muscle are not stimulated, so no shivering occur. Next. So, okay, so if today is cold, cold day, so to cold day, when cold day, your body temperature decreases. So this change in body temperature will be detected by temperature receptor. So the temperature receptors in the skin detect the change in body temperature. So number two, I repeat, when the body temperature decreases, temperature receptors detect the change in body temperature. And the receptor generate the nerve impulse and send the nerve impulse through the neuron to the hypothalamus. Number three, generate generate nerve impulses so receptor generate the nerve impulses and send to the hypothalamus by neurons so number four so once the nerve impulse reach reaches the i mean the nerve impulses reach the hypothalamus hypothalamus is stimulated from the hypothalamus nerve impulse are sent to the 
Nerve impulses are sent to the relevant parts of the body, such as skin, muscles, and glands. So this stimulates the nerve impulses stimulates vessel constrictions, vessel constrictions of arterial in the skin. So the arterial in the skin vessel constriction mean narrowing. So the skin arterial become narrow, and the shunted vessel relax. May more blood can flow in this way in the shunted vessel instead of flowing to the blood capillaries. You can see this blood capillaries narrowing, narrowing. So less blood, less blood. But now you are cold, so less blood flow flow to the blood capillaries near the skin surface. Less blood. That means you want to conserve the heat. So less heat is lost by three ways, which is the radiation, convection, and conduction. Radiation, convection, and conduction. Less, because you want to conserve the heat, because now you are cold. Next. So when you are cold, this erector muscle contract MC. Contract. So when this erector muscle contract, Skin hair is standing up, that means standing, is raised, is raised. So when the skin hair is raised, to trap the heat, trap heat, okay, to trap the heat, trap the heat. So this will warm your body. Next, of course, you can say when you are cold, when you are cold, the sweat glands, sweat glands become less active, less active. Okay, so if the sweat gland becomes less active, that means less sweat will be produced. Less sweat. And less sweat evaporate, of course, less heat will be lost. Less leaven heat of vaporization is lost. I repeat. Okay, so when you are cold, sweat gland becomes less active. You have to write down like this. Less, less active. Less sweat produced. Less sweat evaporates less latent heat of vaporization is lost so you just follow on the top but all you change to less 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 okay next thyroid glands will secrete more thyroxine adrenal gland will secrete more adrenaline so our body metabolism increases so our metabolic rate increases more heat will be generated but if you still cold then your body will trigger shivering that means your skeletal muscle you can see these hands legs the skeletal muscle are stimulated skeletal muscle are contract stimulated contract contract rapidly and this will cause shivering 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 so when you are cold the last choice is a shivering which which is want to bring your body temperature back to 37 degrees 37 degrees Celsius so all this action is to bring your body temperature back to 37 degrees Celsius so how we achieve how we achieve how we maintain the body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius by which mechanism the answer is negative feedback mechanism and why we want to maintain this 37 degrees Celsius because most of our physiological processes in our body will function the best, will function optimally at 37 degrees Celsius. So the enzyme, the enzyme also functions, that means the reaction catalyzed by enzyme also function the best at 37 degrees Celsius. So that's all for today. So thank you for watching my video.